In this documentary, we'll journey deep into the forests of Africa and behind the walls of captivity to reveal a side of chimpanzees that's rarely seen. We are about to uncover 10 scientifically documented behaviors that will forever change the way you see our closest animal relatives. What you're about to witness is not for the faint of heart. It is a raw, unflinching look at the beautiful and terrifying reality of what it means to be a chimpanzee. Prepare yourself, because the line between us and them is about to get terrifyingly thin. A chimpanzee's sex life is just as complex and politically charged as any other part of their society. Reproduction isn't just a biological need. It's a source of intense competition, strategic maneuvering, and sometimes disturbing behavior. In the wild, a female's fertility is advertised by a prominent physical swelling, signaling to males that it's time to compete. High-ranking males will often try to monopolize her, using their status to ward off rivals. But lower-ranking males have their own tricks. A clever male might form a consortship, luring a female away from the main group to a secluded spot. There, away from the violent threats of dominant males, he can mate with her without interference. It's a strategy that requires cunning, social awareness, and a willingness to face the alphas rough. But this delicate balance can be thrown into chaos, especially in captivity where social learning gets disrupted. Chimpanzees deprived of a normal upbringing, particularly those raised without their mothers, can develop abnormal sexual behaviors. They may not learn how to properly court or mate, leading to inappropriate or unsuccessful encounters. The social education that governs so much of their lives is critical, and when it's absent, the results are a stark reminder of how fragile their social systems really are. We begin not with a shock, but with something that sets the stage for everything else. Chimpanzees have culture. Think of it like this. In one corner of the forest, chimps use sticks to fish for termites, a delicate skill. In another, they might use chewed leaves as sponges to get a drink of water. These aren't just random discoveries, they are learned techniques, perfected and passed from mother to child, elder to juvenile, across generations. Scientists have documented dozens of distinct cultural patterns, from unique grooming handshakes to courtship dances and even specific ways of building nests. One group might master the art of cracking nuts with stone hammers and anvils, a skill that can take a young chimp years of practice to learn. Other groups, with the very same nuts and stones right there, never develop the skill. It's not about what's available, it's about tradition. This capacity for social learning reveals a world rich with information, where survival depends not just on instinct, but on what you learn from your family. The image of an early human hunting with a spear is iconic, a symbol of our ancestors' ingenuity. For the longest time, we believed that crafting a weapon for a hunt was a line no other animal had crossed. But in the Fongoli savanna of Senegal, researchers witnessed something that rewrote our understanding of animal intelligence. They saw chimpanzees hunting with spears. And this wasn't just grabbing a stick. The process was deliberate. A chimp would select a sturdy branch, break it off, strip the leaves, and then often use its own teeth to sharpen the end into a deadly point. Their target, small, nocturnal primates called bush babies, sleeping in tree hollows. The chimps would take their crafted spear and forcefully jab it into the cavities, trying to impale their prey. This was no fluke, it was observed hundreds of times, a consistent hunting strategy within this specific community. If tool use reveals a chimp's intelligence, our next behavior pulls back the curtain on their emotional world, a world so deep it's both beautiful and heartbreaking. Chimpanzees mourn their dead. This isn't simple curiosity. It's a profound response to loss that mirrors our own grieving in an uncanny way. When a member of their community dies, chimps don't just walk away. They gather around the body, quietly touching, sniffing, and grooming the deceased. 
Mothers whose infants have died have been seen carrying the small, lifeless bodies for days, even weeks, refusing to let go. They cradle them as if they're still alive, a poignant display of a bond that death can't immediately break. They are a social being whose loss is deeply felt, revealing an awareness of death that connects us across the species divide. In the complex and often volatile world of chimpanzee society, one currency is more valuable than any other, trust. Food sharing, for instance, is rarely a random act of kindness, it's a highly strategic social tool. A successful hunter will often share meat with his allies, reinforcing political bonds and guaranteeing their support in the future. He might share with a potential mate or a higher ranking male to curry favor. It's a calculated social transaction, a clear demonstration of who is in your corner. This selective sharing reveals a sharp understanding of social dynamics and reciprocity the classic idea of you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, but the most fundamental cooperative behavior is grooming. On the surface, it's about hygiene picking out dirt and parasites. But its true function is social. Spending time meticulously grooming a group member is a profound act of intimacy and trust. It lowers stress, forges and solidifies alliances and men's relationships. Dr. Jane Goodall's work in Gombe Stream National Park provided the first chilling evidence that chimpanzees engage in what can only be described as warfare. It was a revelation proving that the capacity for coordinated, intergroup conflict is not uniquely human. The motives behind this violence are eerily familiar. Territory, resources, and females. By expanding their territory, they gain more food. By eliminating rival males, they increase their own chances to reproduce. Researchers found these patrols aren't reckless. The chimps seem to calculate the risk, preferring to attack only when they have a clear numerical advantage. This isn't blind rage, it's proactive, goal-oriented aggression. We now move from the wild forests to the confines of captivity, where the chimpanzee mind, starved of its natural world, can begin to unravel. Many captive chimps, especially those with traumatic pasts, exhibit a range of disturbing, repetitive behaviors known as stereotypies. These aren't the actions of a healthy animal. They are the symptoms of deep psychological distress. One of the most common is rocking. For hours on end, a chimp might sway back and forth, a self-soothing motion often seen in those separated from their mothers at a young age. Another is compulsive grooming, or plucking, where a chimp pulls out their own hair, sometimes leaving bald patches. Even more unsettling are behaviors like coprophagy eating feces or the regurgitation and reingestion of food. These behaviors are virtually non-existent in the wild. In captivity, they become distressingly common. Researchers believe these are desperate coping mechanisms, attempts to self-stimulate in a barren environment that lacks the challenges of their natural habitat. There are some lines we believe nature doesn't cross. But in the world of chimpanzees, even the ultimate taboo is on the table. Cannibalism has been documented in several chimp communities, and the context is often as disturbing as the act itself. This isn't a behavior born of starvation. Instead, it's almost always linked to the intense, violent conflicts we've already discussed. After a lethal attack on a rival, the victors have sometimes been observed consuming parts of the body, especially if the victim is an infant. Raiding parties from one group may attack a female from another and seize her baby, which is then killed and eaten. Why? The exact reasons are still debated. One theory is that it's the ultimate act of domination sending a brutal message to rival groups. Another suggests it could simply be an opportunistic, high-protein meal after a violent encounter. The aggression is the primary goal, and the cannibalism is a gruesome bonus. Jane Goodall documented these horrific events in Gombe, describing a mother-daughter pair, Passion and Palm, who went on a spree of killing and eating infants from within their own community. This wasn't intergroup warfare, 
but something even more terrifying, a pathological breakdown of social behavior. Cannibalism represents the absolute darkest potential of chimpanzee behavior, a horrifying intersection of violence and dominance. Our final point is not a single behavior, but a chilling realization based on everything we've seen. The intricate cultures, strategic wars, deep emotional bonds, and profound psychological scars all point to one unsettling conclusion. The line separating us from them is blurry, perhaps to the point of not existing at all. The abnormal behaviors we see in captive chimpanzees are rampant. Studies show that despite efforts to enrich their environments, nearly all zoo-living chimpanzees exhibit some form of abnormal behavior. These are not isolated incidents, they are symptoms of a systemic problem. They are the predictable outcome of placing a highly intelligent, social, and emotionally complex being into an environment that can never meet its needs. Their symptoms, so similar to human disorders like PTSD and depression, force us to confront the reality of their suffering. This forces us to look in the mirror. Their capacity for brutality reflects the darkest parts of our own history. Their capacity for culture, empathy, and grief reflects the best of our humanity. When we see a chimp mourn a lost child, or another spiral into madness from isolation, we are not just observing an animal. We are seeing a fellow sentient being, and that carries a profound ethical weight. The behaviors that freak us out aren't horrifying because they are alien. They are horrifying because they are so deeply, unsettlingly familiar. They show us that the traits we value and the demons we fear are not uniquely ours. They are echoes from a shared evolutionary past. If this journey into the complex world of chimpanzees has changed how you see our animal relatives, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We release new documentaries every week that pull back the curtain on the hidden lives of the world's most incredible creatures. And be sure to check out our other video, The Secret Culture of the Apes, to explore even more about primate intelligence. From the intricate web of their social lives to the brutal realities of their conflicts, chimpanzees are far more complex than we ever gave them credit for. They aren't simple caricatures of people. They are a species with their own rich cultures, their own political dramas, and their own profound emotional lives. The behaviors that shock and disturb us, the violence, the grief, the madness serve as a powerful, and perhaps uncomfortable, reminder of our own nature. They hold up a mirror, forcing us to confront the deep evolutionary roots of our compassion and our cruelty. The most freakish thing about chimpanzee behavior isn't how different it is from ours, but how terrifyingly similar it can be. And in that similarity lies a lesson, a call for greater respect, understanding, and humility in the face of a mind so much like our own.